One of the many cool features within Bitwig is that we have the ability to sandbox our third-party VST plugins. So if we happen to be working on a project and a VST or plugin crashes, it's not most likely going to bring our entire project down. And instead we'll see a window like this, where we'll have the option to reload the particular plugin that has crashed or reload all plugins if you have an instance where multiple plugins have crashed. So this is a really cool feature that can save you time and headaches and even work that you've done. But what's even cooler about this feature is the level of control that we have when we are making use of the sandboxing. So let's come up to the top and click on the Bitwig logo and come to our settings. And then here we have the plugin. So by default, this is gonna go to your user interface or wherever you last were at, but we want to click on the plugins here. Now here at the very top, we have a few different settings that we can make use of. Now by default, this is gonna be on together because I have not made any changes here. This is as it was after I installed Bitwig. But let's just start with the very first one within Bitwig. So with this, the plugins are gonna be loaded along with the audio engine. So if a VST crashes, this can crash your audio, bring down your audio engine. But this setting is going to take the least amount of resources. And you can see this little guide here that as we move to the right, these other settings are gonna be more safe, but they're gonna take up more resources. So this is the first one. Your third party plugins are gonna run with the Bitwig audio engine. If they crash, it's most likely gonna bring Bitwig down. The next one that we have is together and the plugins are sandboxed together, separating them from the audio engine. So if you have a plugin that crashes, this won't most likely bring your entire Bitwig project down. Now the next setting that we have is by manufacturer. So in this instance, if you have multiple VST plugins from various manufacturers and you have one that crashes, then these are gonna be isolated for that particular manufacturer. Your other plugins that are from different manufacturers should still be running okay. Now, moving on to the right, we have by plugin, and this is gonna be individual sandboxes created for each plugin used. But keep in mind though, that if you're using a particular EQ and you use it multiple times on multiple tracks, uh, that is going to fail on all of those multiple tracks. Now the final setting that we have here is individually. So every instance of your plugin is going to be sandboxed. And this is, as it states here, this is the most memory intensive option, but this is going to give you the safest, most reliable outcome. So every single instance of your third-party VSTs, regardless of the manufacturer, regardless of the type, is gonna be in its own process. So if you have one in particular that crashes, every other instance should still be working fine. So I'm gonna take this back to the default of together, and then down at the very bottom, we have even further control here. So if we have a particular plugin that is always causing problems, we can select that plugin from the list here. So selected plugins in this list will be hosted individually. So if 95% of your plugins always work and you never have problems with them, you can use this to save your resources and just choose the one or two that are problematic for you. Fortunately for me, I don't have much of a problem with VSTs bringing down my system. As you can see, I don't have many. I like to keep the plugins that I use down to a bare, bare minimum. Okay, so we will wrap up here. I hope that you found something useful and I will see you in the next tutorial.